Hello everyone, my name is Muhammad Yusuf Iqbal from Pakistan. I am a doctoral student of Thayon University of Technology from the Department of Mechanical Engineering. Today, I would like to share my research about a high efficiency energy harvesting by using hydraulic electromagnetic regenerative shock absorber in which we will harvest the energy and we can convert into electrical energy. That electrical energy we can use into a recharge our car battery. So these are our content in which introduction, objective, working principle, mathematical modeling, emission simulation and the experimental results and in the end we will conclude our results. So why we choose this topic? You, uh, we know that 70% of the total oil consumption is used in the transportation in the world in which 20 to 25% total fuel energy is the useful while the other is the uh, losses. So traditional cars just only use 20% of all consumed energy when driving on a road course to overcome the air resistance and the road resistance. These are the energy losses in which 68 to 72 percent is the engine losses in which the thermal radiator uh, losses, combustion losses, pumping losses and the friction losses. The next one is the auxiliary electrical losses 0 to 2 percent. The parasitic losses so 4 to 6 percent and the power to wheel losses is 16 to 25 percent and the drive drivetrain losses 5 to 6 percent in which we will study about the wheel losses. So in which uh, there is the two harvester, linear harvester and the rotary harvester. If we use the linear harvester, then we can convert directly kinetic energy into a generator and then the generator produces the electricity and we can recharge our battery. While in the rotary harvester, we use the transmission mechanism and then we use the motion rectifier. Then motion rectifier is converted into a generator and then we use that electrical energy. This one is the randomly waves that vehicle is crossing the road and the subjected to the road roughness and in which the hydraulic cylinder damper is moving up and down and the motion is converted from uh, vertical into a un in two directional to our uh, rotary motions and when then we can convert into unidirectional and after that uh, we can convert into a generator by using the different uh, 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 hydraulic rectifiers and accumulator by using the accumulator so uh, we know that the number of the vehicles increasing day by day and it also causes the increasing the noise pollution and the vibrations so by using this we can decrease the vibration and also decrease the noise pollution that also created by the shock absorber uh, the traditional shock absorber so then second one is the right comfort and the stability everyone wants the right comfort and the stability when drive a car on on the road so by doing this we can save the million dollars in the fuel saving because it gives the electrical energy that recharge our battery so we can save the uh, million dollars the majority of the energy losses in this the 70 percent uh 70 percent while the wheel energy losses are about 23 percent and the ranging from 3 to 12 percent of the fuel energy consumption the motive of this study is to focus the analysis and the quantification of reducing the force in different conditions as fundamental guideline in regenerative suspension the dissipated power is about 80 watt per shock absorber for a commercial vehicle uh, driving 90 km per hour which indicates a huge potential improving the fuel efficiency of the vehicle these are the advantages of the hydraulic regenerative shock absorber in which the energy generated we can increase the efficiency increase the safety increase the durability reduce the emission reduce the cost and reduce the services and we can uh, provide the uh, more comfort so objective of our research the first one is design a new model of the hydraulic regenerative regenerative shock absorber the second one is building a test bench and the bench verification model the third one is obtain the characteristics curves and the speed characteristics curve the fourth one is calculate and analyze the damping forces we can calculate the energy recovery efficiency of the hydraulic regenerative shock absorber and we can harvest the energy in both expansion and also in the compression the design of the system that will convert the kinetic energy into electric, uh, electricity instead of the heat through a hydraulic regenerative shock absorber. There are the three uh, methods, uh, a piezoelectric regenerative shock absorber, electromagnetic regenerative shock absorber and the hydraulic regenerative shock absorber. 
In the piezoelectric degenerative shock absorber, uh, the material is used to convert the pressure to generate the wider voltage, while in the electrical use uh, per, uh, permanent magnet and the coil forming a generator to supply electricity and through the electromagnetic induction these are not very effective uh, as compared to the hydraulic regenerative shock absorber in hydraulic regenerative shock absorber pistons are higher to force a pressurized fluid through accumulator coupled to a generator so energy harvesting block diagram in which the road input vibration is converted into vertical extension absorb uh, compression and expansion and after that the hydraulic rectifiers and absorbing the kinetic energy through the accumulator and after that the fluid moves through the motor and electromagnetic generator and produce the electricity and we can recharge our battery this one is the schematic diagram this one is the hydraulic cylinder or we can call the damper in which the compression and the uh, expansion the, in the compression is the red arrow shows that is a compression uh, in which the fluid moves from here and it will reach on a point A. Here is the two ways, this way and this. And we can see that the check valve 1 is closed while the check valve 2 is open. So fluid will move from through check valve 2 and it will move from here. And again on the B point, here is the two ways, but the check valve 4 is a closed valve. So it, uh, the fluid will move from here and after the accumulator, the fluctuation will be moved and the amplitude of the fluctuation is minimum and after that uh, it fluid moves from the motor uh, we can see here and after that uh, it move on a, it reach on a C point on C point here we can see is a two check valves both are the open uh, check valves check valve one and check valve three but the fluid will move through the check valve three because on a fl uh, check valve one is the high pressure because the piston the cylinder is a compression stage so that's why the check valve one is a closed and the check valve three will be open and the fluid will move from here uh, from, from here and it will reach here so uh, like this is the ex extension uh, expansion stroke so these are the parameters that we are using in which the 1.6 liter accumulator volumes 400 car body mass and the 50 tire mass and the uh, spring rate is the 1500 the task of the damper is reduce the vibration of the spring masses to a reasonable level to give the comfort and the safety the mathematical modeling we always use the value of the n is between the 1 and the 1.4 uh, and in the next slide we will prove it uh, because our friction uh, force ratio value is 1.09 it means our 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 model is uh, sustainable and these are the uh, schematic diagram we sketch our uh, in the lms emission simulation in which the sketch was the first uh, there is the four steps the first one is a sketch the second one is the sub modeling the third one is the parameter modeling and the fourth one is the simulation model in which we can see that there is a road signal tire mass then dampers the core body mass and the piston moving body and the check valves and the accumulator and the motor so there are the three parts actuator parts energy feeding parts and the electrical parts in the this one is the actuator part we can see here and the energy feeding part in which we, we feed the energy and this one is the electrical part uh, recharge our battery and convert the um, this one is the um, motion mechanical uh, energy is converted into a electrical energy in this part so the this one is the work band the main and this one is the hydraulic cylinder we can see here the hydraulic rectifiers uh, pressure transducers accumulator and the hydraulic motor the three-phase alternator and the sliding rear strip we can see the main part is the accumulator and the rectifiers and the hydraulic cylinder and also the unidirectional uh, hydraulic motor so now we will discuss about some results the first one is the accumulator accumulator we know that also the pressure storage reservoir so in this it can store 0.5 mega pascal of the fluid the maximum uh, pressure it can uh, save it can uh, res reserve 0.5 mega uh, mega pascal this one is an another flow rate with respect to time and uh, flow rate with respect to time of the fluid uh, through the accumulator so the high compression ratio is uh, 10 to 1 so in the hydraulic motor we can see here 
the both the compression and the expansion is uh, goes in the unit direction because after moving the uh, accumulator after moving the accumulator the uh, the uh, expansion and the compression is in the unit directional and uh, the this one is a short speed uh, result we get we want to get the maximum shaft speed then we get the maximum shaft speed then we our generator will produce the more electric electricity so in this model we uh, recharge we can uh, rotate our shaft speed we can uh, get the 9000 revolution per minute while the speed is varied by the controlling the amount of the input flow in, into the motor motor target is required to start a load moving uh, then to keep it moving so the next one is the sine waves the, here we can see that the piston moving body the force ratio is greater than one and always less than one in our model we can see that the compression force is the th 3368 uh, and the com uh, expansion force is the 36 and 77 newton and the force ratio is equal to 1.09 and the recovery resistance is uh, 7000 and newton this one is the velocity curve of our of our uh, piston body is 0.52 uh, meter per second the shaft speed at the different frequency we can we have checked in which the motor speed at a specific inlet pressure while the motor can sustain for a limited time without the damage uh, we get the maximum shaft speed at 1.6 hertz frequency uh, this one is the damping characteristics curve the force and the hysteresis uh, uh, curve between the force and the displacement in the hydraulic rectifier we see that the amplitude of the wave is maximum uh, um, after uh, but when we use the hydraulic rectifiers the amplitude of the waves is we can see that is a minimum so the hydraulic uh, rectifiers decrease the amplitude of the waves of the vibration uh, so it gives the comfort fluctuation motion advanced model has less amplitude so this one is also the displacement with moving body velocity displacement curve at the different frequency uh, velocity uh, displacement curves we can see that uh, in which the damping characteristics curve uh, at the uh, frequency 1.61 1 .61 is is a uh, is a good we check that the displacement of the moving body is 0 0.01 uh, meter and the velocity is 0 0.49 meter per second that shows a model absorbed maximum damping and it gives the right comfort for the vehicle so this one is the hydraulic motor shaft speed at the different frequency and uh, we can see that the accumulator has a more significant influence on the damping force in both the stretching stroke and the restoring force like compression stroke and the extension stroke which is slow rise of the damping force caused by the accumulator energy storage time in the first half of the compression stroke so we can see that here is the shaft speed is also the added cylinder diameter different cylinder diameter we can check here but the maximum shaft speed is we get at the 50 millimeter it shows that the maximum damping force during the extension stroke a damping force during the extension stroke is always greater than the compression stroke so this one is an another damping characteristics curves at the different frequency and the different displacement so uh, we conclude the first one is the hydraulic energy of the frequently re reversing flow generated by reciprocating motion of the shock absorber is converted into a unidirectional circulating fluid the second one is the disproportion of the absorbing force of the traditional shock absorber is achieved by adjusting the system pipeline layout scheme the third one is the minimize the absorbing force of the hybrid energy feeding shock absorber at no load so that much damping force as possible provide the back emf generated by the generator during the power generation process the last one is the external load was 1.6 frequency in which uh, we feed uh, efficiency is 14.67 percent so the in the future uh, the next uh, we can do work on this in the test bench we can get the more uh, fair uh, efficiency and we can recover the more harvest energy and that's all about me thank you so much